after Matt. Thank you. Unless you're not ready to be after Matt, and then Jay could go next. But we got music after some more comedy. Thanks again for coming out. The Sean Bowen's open mic. You guys are quiet today. I like it. This is the quietest crowd we've ever, ever had here. That's fine. Ladies and gentlemen, the special tonight is uh, Chocolate Cherry Bach Samuel Adams. Is it? Is it good? I haven't had it yet. I've been calling it. I've been calling it the Gay Lumberjack all night, but I don't know. It might be better than that. I have no idea. I mean, last night the special was uh, what was it? It was vodka and a spritz of lemon and some fairy dots on top. And the night before that, it was what was it? It was. Uh, a shot of come on ice with cherry grenadine and gold flakes on top. And that was delicious, man. That was like the best thing I've ever had here. But, um, no, I, I, I moved back home with my parents for, what's that? Uh, Matt, Matt's been making that up in the front of the bar. Oh, okay. That was the other place. All right, my bad. I'm sorry. But, um, I, I moved back home for a whole semester. I, I gotta get back to school. I'm living with my parents right now. And my mom called me today. She's like, hey, your dad's coming home from his trip early. Just don't want him to surprise you. And I was like, what the fuck does that mean? Like, you got to just, like, sit around, smoke pot, and jerk off all day. And I, like, don't want somebody to come home and catch me. And then let me rephrase that question. How does she know I'm sitting around smoking pot and jerking off all day? Like, does she have surveillance cameras set up in the house or what? Yes. But, um, God. I, I always, I'm such a bad liar, you know? Like, I've always lied about that shit. I, I like... You first go through puberty, you're like jerking off in your bed, and your parents come in, and for some fucking reason, you don't hear them coming down the whole hallway, but you just hear their door rattle, and then you pretend you're not, and you flare your hands up over your head, and pretend you're asleep, but it's like, when the fuck do you ever sleep like this? Like, your parents aren't going to be like, what the fuck, dude? Like, what were you doing? And like, I do that with everything, you know? Like, I used to hook up with my girlfriends in my basement. And my parents would come down the steps, be real loud on purpose. They were very courteous about that. And then they'd come down to the bottom of the steps and like, like one end of the couch, another end of the couch. But they'd come down and I'd be like, <laughs> no, it's up. And just like sweaty and red and like huffing and puffing. And they'd be like, so what, what are you doing down here? What's going on? And I was just like, watching a funny movie, a lot of jokes and movie and great time. We're just hanging out opposite of the couch, no big deal. And they'd be like, really? You thought it was funny? Deer Hunter was a funny movie? You, is that what you thought? I'm like, okay, well, see you later. I want to go to bed. God. I was such a dumb little kid, too. Like, I would talk to my girlfriends in the laundry room. Because my whole house is like, there's no floor in between the first and the second area. So everything echoes in my house. I would go to the laundry room which, I'm fucking stupid, was right below my parents' bedroom. And like, I was younger, and I was trying to like, I was with my girlfriend on the phone, and I was like, man, we've like, sucked and touched all over each other, and you know, and she's like, yeah? And I'm like, but we still haven't had sex yet. And she's like, yeah? And I'm like, well maybe we can, uh, you know, change that. And she's giggling, and then my mom comes around the corner, I'm like, shit. And she's like, hey, who are you talking to? I'm like, buddy of mine. She's like, okay, cool, we'll go to bed, see ya. And I'm like, shh, that was close. And she comes back around the corner and she's like, hey, um, you're a little loud, so maybe we can change that. <laughs> and then walked away. I was like, fuck. You heard everything I said. I can't fucking get over this. Like, god damn it. I'm such a stupid kid. I, I was stupid even when I was little, though. Like, I, I was so little. And, um, I used to watch rated R movies. Like, my parents would let me watch movies, but only to, like, the good part, so like, we'd be hanging out watching this movie, and as soon as the real sex started to happen, I'd get booted out of the room. So I had this really like skewed version of what sex was when I was younger, you know, so like, we'd play house with my neighbors in this like, tree fort, and I'd come home, and they'd be like, oh, honey, you're home. I'd be like, hey, woman, drop your drawers, I'll bring the bacon home. And like, I'd say like, really stupid, like, masonistic, or masonistic, ma blah, blah, blah. misogynist, there you go. Oh, it's got my back. Hold on, hit it. And um, so I'd come home and I, I'd do that. And, but then, like, I didn't know where to go after that, luckily. So there's just a bunch of, like, pantsless kids in a treehouse, like, pretending to make dinner together. Like, thank God I didn't know where anything went after that. I was so stupid when I was little. Oh, man. And, and we would do, like, artistic things. Like, I definitely have my mom's sense of humor and not my dad's. My dad's very, like, engineering, straight line, strict. 
to the point where, like, if I had my dad's sense of humor, I would have watched the Flintstones as a kid and been like, ah, bullshit! <laughs> that car weighs 6,000 pounds, full of rock, and he's pedaling it with his fucking feet. Horseshit! That, is, that cannot happen. Like, that's the kind of guy he is. Like, take away all the imagination. And so, like, I didn't have a lot of creativity growing up because he would, like, squelch it, you know? Like, my sister and I would build, like, Lego houses, and, you know, she'd build a house, like, upside down with all different colors. And I at least followed my dad's rules. I'd build it, like, with the same colors, put the roof on top, and then I'd make all this furniture. And he'd be like, oh, well, you should have put the furniture inside before you finish, because now you got to take it apart again. And I'm like, oh, yeah, shit, I didn't, like, put that in my Lego budget of building houses. Like, fuck off, dude. Like, ch chill, okay? I'm a kid. God. But he used to do that with everything. Like, I was so jealous that I didn't have my sister's creativity growing up. She made this, this picture one time. I can remember it so clearly. And it was made out of beans. And my parents were like, Molly, we're so proud of you. This looks exactly like you. This is so good. And at the time, I was so pissed. But now that I'm older, I'm like, what's worse? Like, not being able to make a picture out of beans that looks like you? Or looking like a picture made out of fucking beans? Like, <laughs> My sister must have been like the lumpiest, goofiest looking kid in the fucking world when we were little, you know what I mean? God. I was so dumb when I was little though. It's it's just ridiculous. <sighs> now I gotta catch up, hold on. Talk amongst yourselves for a second, I lost it. A, a little bit clapped. Um I'll skip ahead, I might come back, but I, I watch so much TV, just like the R-rated movies. I watched TV when I was young, I watch TV now that I'm older. And they're doing this thing now where they're like meshing reality TV and documentary TV. You know, like a documentary is supposed to be like just facts straight through, following people either at an event or doing something. So they have all these shows now where they're like following people through jobs and stuff. But they're like really trying to tie in that Jersey Shore reality bullshit where like people are fucking each other and fighting at the same time. You know, like nothing can just be like real anymore without somebody fucking someone's wife or fighting. But like, I, I like, um, do you ever watch like Gold Rush? Anybody watch that? Yeah. It's like a show about people's jobs and it's legitimate, you know, they get pissed off. They're, they're digging for gold, they work for two months. If they don't find gold, they don't get paid. They're angry, I get that, it's a fact. But like, Axe Men's a show where they have these ridiculous motherfuckers who like don't know how to do their job and they use the wrong equipment and they just rig everything together with like, do, like gum and toothpicks and, they, and then they're like surprised when they almost die every day. And so like, like for, here's a great example. They'll be like, this is the most dangerous job you could probably ever have if you don't know what you're doing. And you're like, okay, so hopefully you all know what you're doing. And then they cut to like another scene a miles away and they're like, this is the biggest tree we've ever cut down. So this guy's been here for a week. We're gonna let him cut it down and just see what happens. I mean, <laughs> see where it goes from here. And it like falls on somebody's car and almost kills someone. And then they're surprised about that. And then they have these things called yarders that are like high tension wires. They weigh millions of pounds and they drag huge trees up this hill that weigh like two or 3,000 pounds a piece. And so they, they draw up like three of these huge trees up this hill. It works perfect. That's what it's supposed to do. That's what it was made for. And some guys up there are like, who diddly? Now we can start hauling the real shit. And then they cut back to a guy down at the bottom of the hill that's like, I shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't be doing this. And he's like, yeah, start hauling up the real weight, but not too much, like real quiet to himself just to save his own ass. And then like, you know, like six of these gigantic logs come up this hill and the wire snaps and almost cuts a guy head off. And then like all these logs roll down the hill. And the motherfucker at the top who told him to do it is like, you dumb son of a bitch, what did I tell you? Not too much. And it's like, you made him do that. And then he comes running down the hill to fight the guy at the bottom. And the guy at the bottom naturally is like, you told me to do this, you fuck. Like, what are you, are you crazy? And then they all fight each other. It's like, if you just did what you were supposed to, none of this shit would have happened. It's like, what the hell? But all those shows are like that now on TV. And I'm watching way too much TV. TiVo's the fucking devil. I thought it was cool for like a month. And now I'm just watching like everything. Like Wife Swap. You ever watch Wife Swap? Like, oh my god, I've watched like eight episodes of Wife Swap in a row. And I was on that page, I was like, this is an awful show. And then like ten, later, ten episodes later, I'm like, this is my favorite show. <laughs> It's just these trashy families that, like, they're so different, but they can't just have that moment where they sit down and they're like, 
you're different, I'm different, let's reconcile and learn from each other. They're always just like, you're the fucking worst I've ever met in my life. And then they just dish it right back out to them. And everybody's like, so extreme in that thing. It's ridiculous. But, and they always learn from each other too, so that's why I like it. And then I have that like, soft spot in my heart where I'm like, oh, they learned something. But then they go to this meeting at the end where they're just like, fuck you, no fuck you, no fuck you. And the guys are like, you talk to my wife that way, I'm gonna kill you, man. And then they're all like shaking hands after and they leave. But uh, Another show that I absolutely love though is, it is um, those, those storage unit shows and storage wars. My, my favorite one though is Pawn Stars because they actually learn, like, all these guys in the shop are super educated, and if they don't know what they're talking about, they bring someone in who is, and they appraise it, and you learn shit. In Storage Wars, they're like, I got two grand, fuck it, I'm gonna spend two grand on a storage unit full of shit that I don't even know about, and then they bring it to somebody and ask them to tell them how much, and then while that person's talking, they're like, oh, this is a 19th century Chinese, uh, and the guys in the background like, <laughs> And they're like, oh, the handmade quality in this is so excellent, and I just, I'm so, I'm so appeased by this. And they're like, fuck, oh, shit, like, come on, how much does it work? They just want to make their money back, because they, like, throw money at all this trash, and then they hope that it just gets them something back. And it's just such a, it's such a sham, man. You know, I feel robbed by the television show. Hey, what's happening? Oh. And in the meantime, I still haven't remembered stuff I was supposed to talk about earlier, but... Oh well. You guys are all a new crowd though, so I want to do like one little bit from one of my old bits. Is that okay? We have enough time for that? Okay, yeah. And so, I'm, I, I consider myself like very tough, you know, but like mentally. And then these things will come around where I'm just like, I'm not that tough, like I couldn't do any of the things. Like, I used to think I could never get sick when I was little, and I used to think I could like think away cancer even. But then like, I had a kidney stone before, and it was like really painful, and I was like, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna fucking die, I'm like, I have cancer, I'm gonna die. I'm not tough, I give up, I'm not tough. And like, shit like that always happens to me where I'm like, ugh, like, I'm so tough, and then like, I just back off of everything, but like, I'm not that good at sports. And I realized this in college, I played rugby. And my favorite part about rugby was we would go to these parties all the time and sing these songs and have like social events. It was so fun. And I want you guys to sing this song with me. It's called I Wish All the Ladies. And it's an echo song. So just say everything I say. We go, I wish all the ladies. Wish all the ladies. We're long-tailed foxes. Long-tailed foxes. Cause I'd be the tall grass. I'll be and I'd tickle all the boxes. Tickle all the boxes. Singing, hey, margarita. Hey, hey, come on, hey, pass the reefer. Hey, hey. And one time, I improvised the song in public, and I was like, I wish all the ladies. We show the ladies. We're bikers in a race. We're bikers in a race. And I'd be the bike seat. Be the They'd be sitting on my face, face. singing, hey, margarita, hey, hey, come on, pass the reef up. hey, hey. And a bunch of guys came up to me like, Dad, that's the, that's the coolest thing you've ever done. And I was like, fuck, like, uh, I played probably for four years, and that's the coolest thing I've ever done, it's kind of like a fucking song lyric. Like, I must be terrible at this game and the sports and the whole thing. But I, I asked somebody that night, I was like, you know, like, why do we sing these songs? It makes everybody run away. All the girls just disappear because we sing these songs about fucking them and jizzing on them and shit like that. And they just, they just disappear. Like, why would you do that? And they're like, kid, dude, look over there. How many do you see? And I'm like, two girls. And they're like, yeah. We sang for two hours about fucking on them and jizzing on them and, and shitting all over the place. And they're still here. So what do you think's going to happen tonight? And I was like... You are smart, sir. Like you are a genius. Um, that's my that's my time, guys. Thank you very much. Give it up for Matt one more time, folks. It's Justin Crowder.